Yo, 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 what's up, all you burner stoners and potheads? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you v -v 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 vipers doing out there, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman. How the hell are you? Feeling pretty good. Yeah? But I'm ready to get really good. You're ready to get normal? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get normal here in a second. Hey, everybody out there in the world, hopefully you're smoking some big fat doinks where I listen to the show. And Mrs. Weedman and I are about to get normal. We're smoking some goat glue that was given to me by goat genetics and this was a couple weeks ago and he gave me that joint uh and another super duper ooby dooby newbie joint which we still haven't smoked yet because that one's stuffed with hash and then uh goat glue this was a little cute little medical cannabis packet hmm. kind of cute and it mm -hmm. smelled very nice there is no information about this so we're gonna have some fun and just get high and uh, get normal and see what this strain's all about but Mrs. Wee Man's lighting that up, and we're smoking that out of a Spliff Society wrap. Thanks, Briggs, as always, for uh, throwing us some wraps when I see it. Looking forward to it. And uh, I know you got something going on at Blue Island Brewery on December 6th that Mrs. Wee Man and I will probably go and hang out with you all down there. He does a smoke sesh. It's pretty cool with a bunch of vendors and stuff. So we'll see you down there on uh, December 6th. And then... You having problems over there, Mrs. Wee Man? I'm lighting the joint. <laughs> having some problems? Uh-uh. <laughs> this is Thanksgiving week. One of my favorite holidays of the year. And because you don't have to buy any gifts. <laughs> you just get to go and enjoy company, storytelling, joint smoking, and some delicious turkey and stuffing and all the good trimmings. Isn't that right, Mrs. Wee Man? That's right. Yes. We, uh, we go to family's house your mom's house as long as i can remember yeah, as long as i remember my whole entire life she's been in control and had thanksgiving just dialed she in. knows how to dress a turkey she knows how to dress a turkey mm -hmm. uh we were just talking um uh o-dog was visiting over the weekend and we were talking about so the kids had friends givings with both of their friend groups and then we were just talking about like Thanksgiving, what to cook, who's bringing what, da 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 da, and it's fun to just see how she has interpreted Thanksgivings now that she's experienced really, really, really good Thanksgiving, and then she's experienced with friends like good Thanksgiving, like really good company, and then just everybody kind of bringing potluck food, so it's not like you know maybe some food got cold, maybe some is just basic, maybe something is just bought from the store. And so she's kind of uh, seen the whole gamut of Thanksgiving <laughs> uh, throwdowns. But I will say we're pretty spoiled. My mom does a really, really, really oh, pretty amazing spread. Delicious. So can't wait. Yes, it's, very exciting. It's a good meal. And then we have what coming up this weekend. Yep. Uh, we'll remind everybody, if you're in the Chicagoland area, we have the... Um, uh, the Quickie Mart. So it's a play on The Simpsons Quickie Mart, and it is a vendor event. Um, it's in the Stan Mansion, which is a an actual mansion in Logan Square. Uh, it's two floors. I think there's over over 30 vendors, maybe even over 50 vendors, a lot of vendors, and tattoos, and uh, tooth gems, and vintage clothing. And Did you say tattoo, the dude from Fantasy Island? Yeah, tattoo. The, the plane, plane. The, the plane. plane. <laughs> <laughs> There's just all sorts of shit going on. It's from 2 o'clock to 9 o'clock. It's, so it's, it's seven hours. Day. Yeah, free admission. Come in and shop. There's also, like, literally, if you're looking for something, I bet there's a vendor there that has it. Soaps, the whole gamut. Some cannabis infused things. I don't even know what's happening. It, it's going to be fun. It is a cannabis... Um, event to some degree uh, consumption is okay i guess they'll have an area where consumption is okay hell yeah um so and th there's some sponsorship so there will be some presence of maybe some things that you could partake in um so anyway that'll be fun that's the quickie mart um and you can just show up and get a ticket at the door then on sunday so that's saturday and then on sunday we're going to be the address is not released yet the it we'll find it but if you go on little farm little buds farmers market or uh bob's exotics um just check out our posts we've been posting about it and you'll have links to their profiles that's how you get tickets but again it's going to be a vendor event definitely cannabis heavy at this event there will be vendors it's all going to be cannabis dabs, related dabs, dabs. there's going to be dab stations there's going to be press rosin press like 
it's the full on glass, every everything you can think of, seeds, everything, mm -hmm. music, uh, food trucks, all sorts of stuff. And that is going from, I think, two to seven. Anyway, it's an all day event. Check it out and come on up. It's going to be up north. I think they're talking about Deerfield, Deerfield, something like that. It'll be fun. So it'll come be smoke fun. a joint with me yeah. at both events. <laughs> come find and me. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Mrs. Weed Man. I got a function though. <laughs> I have a tendency to go a little overboard when we go to these cannabis events, and then I, I have to step outside to breathe and like figure out where the hell I am, and then I can't get myself back inside. <laughs> outside so, is good. Yeah, outside is good. <laughs> you finished your um, your uh, the thing you were doing online. Your um, every night. Uh -huh. what, what was it called? I forgot. A survey. A survey. Thank you. Yeah. You're, how did that go? I helped you. It was on fun. Some of the so things. it was a two week long survey. It was put out. Uh, I had uh, posted it on my story a few times. Um, the one of the doctors who was organizing the survey was on uh, Mr. Weedman's podcast, The Grow Hour. And anyway, it was a really kind of intensive survey, a daily survey. You pick the time that you wanted to be nudged to do your survey for the day, and they would send you a text message with a link, and you go to it, and it says it takes two minutes. That's a lie. It probably realistically took 10 to 15 minutes each night. Well, but, you did it when you were highly but stoned, But it was too. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and I chose to do it in the evening. I did yeah. it. My my reminder came at 1030, and I think you have two hours to complete the the quiz or the survey. And so every night it's essentially the same questions, except the last night they, it they evolved. asked some heavy questions. They asked some last bigger night. questions um, because it was kind of the wrap up. Uh, but otherwise, it was very consistent questions. I did notice a couple times, but I was very high that it seemed like there were more questions. And I think that was because I answered something I like, yes, that I had answered no. And so the yes answer triggered additional inquiries. Um, but it was really cool, and I can't wait to see the compilation of data and see what comes out of it. They asked about your daily consumption, basically. Like, what did you consume? So they asked if you had wheat, flour. Did you have tinctures? Did you have topicals? Did you have edibles? Did you have concentrates? And if you did, how much of each? And what were the strains dominant in? And what was the terpene or the cannabinoid profile? And da 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 da. And it, how, you know, what time of day did you smoke? What time of day did you start smoking? About how many times did you consume within that the day? And so it was, it, it, there's some pretty big hitting data that they're going to compile yeah. out of this. I will say I wasn't always prepared. I always said, oh, tomorrow I'm going to have the, the package or like <laughs> the, the the envelope that the flower was but in or who, the jar of the flower. Who'd you, who'd you turn and ask? Yeah, I'd be like, hey, Mr. Weedman, what did I smoke? <laughs> 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 what are the terpenes? What are the cannabinoids? Because they were asking you specifically what yeah. terpenes were in there. I didn't always know. And same with the cannabinoids. Like I take my nighttime edible. There's usually a CBN also, in there. But also you're smoking home grow. So we to, don't always know everything. I have either. to look it up, mm -hmm. like what possibly could be the terpenes in there. Sometimes there could be some more. Like right. I grew a strain that had like 16 different terpenes in there. And uh, so you just don't always know how many more. But you kind of know the basics of what when you grow to pick the seeds you're growing. You know, usually the grow will tell you what terpenes profiles are. Or you look online and they'll tell you what, you know, what, what type of terpenes could be yeah. in there. So, so we answered to the best of yes. our available knowledge that we had. And so... Anyway, that'll be an interesting thing to... I think they're, it, it's not done. I feel like there's more. Or maybe you can still join it. They were having some issues with their system. So uh, Cannabichem was her uh, handle on Instagram, Cannabichem. She's a chemist. Um, she specializes. She focuses on cannabis. And the link to the survey is in her profile. So check it out if you want to get involved. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. I didn't do it. I just did it. I played off Mrs. Weed Man. We so. kind of did it together because we usually are consuming about the same. Yeah, about the same, except you consume I do a little more. In the daytime yeah. than I do. <laughs> I do a little more microdosing. <laughs> you ready to get the show started? I'm ready. I'm ready. Connecting the dots with Nikki Lolly, the importance of medical cannabis programs. She, I read an article uh, about her and her where medical cannabis got her. Now she's talking about the importance of medical cannabis programs, and they are important in every state, and in a lot of states, they're kind of getting forgot about. Illinois especially. They don't. No one pays attention to the medical program anymore because you make so much more money on rec, but here's the thing. You don't have to pay a lot of taxes either. We don't. I mean, me as a medical patient only have to pay 3%. You know, 
And so the medical programs are very important, especially if the medical programs in your state allow you to home grow. So there, that's very important, for, especially for people like myself that can't really afford to go to the dispensary and spend $55 on eights and, you know, uh, spend a lot of money. I can home grow, buy seeds, pollen shuck and make my own seeds and, and home grow and be able to stock myself up for months upon months and continuously home grow. And I think that's another reason why a lot of states don't really, really care about the medical program either because they're not making any money off of home grow. And like I'll say, and I'll say it again, the states don't deserve any money from taxes from any of this because they've beaten us up for so long. So that's just my opinion. Uh, so let's go to the article. As a medical cannabis consumer who has worked in the industry for a while, she's seen many states shift their markets from medical to adult use. This often leads to big changes for the patients who rely on the plant. Sometimes these vulnerable consumers get lost in the shuffle. She realizes that the industry focuses uh, adult use because of the larger number of potential consumers. However, many recreational com uh, users could be looking for wellness. After all, many people consume cannabis to improve sleep. Could this be perceived as a medical use? There's also the fact that cannabis industry started on the medical side. Uh, let's just talk about Michigan. Medical caregivers. That's how it all started in Michigan. Uh, anyway, we would not have adult use programs if it weren't for the legacy growers and the patients. We must continue educating, removing the stigma, and helping people access quality cannabis, regardless if it's deemed medical or recreational. Here's a great idea. If you don't really care about the medical programs in these states, why don't you let it be taken over by caregivers and let us have 25 patients and let us home grow 50 plants, 100 plants, and then we can home grow and we can charge them a fair price, pay 3% tax to us that we paid to the state. You don't deserve it, but we'll pay it. And we get to do it. We get to do it and run a, a home business. So if you don't really care about the medical program, that brings in about $35 million a month, twenty-five to thirty-five million dollars a month just in Illinois. Then, then give it to us. I could, I could use a quarter million of that to live nicely, and so can another five thousand, ten thousand people, maybe more. I don't know. So, if you don't care about it, give it back to the people where it all started from. Anyway, medical programs vary per state. Medical programs have several benefits. The first is getting guidance on what products might work best for your condition or symptom management. Medical programs often have some on-site help to navigate the different products. They ask questions about what the patient is looking for and if there's any contradictions based on medications one takes. Medical programs offer guidance and feedback that adult use programs simply can't. Another benefit is usually price. Medical cannabis is usually less expensive than adult use because of the taxes. There are also may be different purchase limits. It's important to note medical programs vary from state regardless of where you live. If medication is an option, it's worth looking into. I tell people all the time, get your med card. Shoo! All over. Many people may qualify and not even know it. Plus, several states have reciprocity. Michigan does. This means if you have a medical marijuana card in your home state, you be able to use it in another state and get those laws there, which are great. Michigan, I use mine all the time there. <laughs> <laughs> When markets go recreational, patients are often forgotten. They may lose access to medicine they have to count on. I almost choked on that drink. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the gulp from a mile away. You went down the wrong hole. <laughs> I was in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> we smoked a lot of that joint. Yeah, we did. Uh, shelf space gets devoted to adult use brands <laughs> with higher margins. The patient coordinators that help guide patients may disappear, which is major consequences when states that go adult use. She highly recommends people get their card. So does Mr. and Mrs. Weedman. I just had a friend of mine get their card because I talked him into getting their card. That's good. Yeah. Save some money. Yeah. Get some good And product. he's going to home grow. He was also a home brewer, so he's like, I should home grow now too. I'm like, yeah, you should. And let's trade some weed. It'll be fun. Get a recommendation from providers. Ask others they're using cannabis for and get support from local groups online or just reach out to people who, who, already, in the, who already have their med card. And talk to people about how to find the right products. This really Reddit's really good for that. Um, Illinois Trees. Uh, there's a lot of people that rate all the Illinois stuff in there, so that's pretty good. That's uh, that's on Reddit. Um, if you want to know, like, I don't think like forty thousand people are on that that Reddit, and uh, and everyone's talking about weed. Good, bad, ugly, great, terrible, 
fuck you. It's kind of funny. <laughs> so, I mean, there's some there's some honest people out <laughs> there, motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, so go check it out. There's plenty of out there. There's plenty of Reddit like stuff. Our cannabis. I mean, if you want to know truth. And people will tell you the truth. <laughs> and they'll tell you what the recommendations are, too. I would definitely check out some Reddit, um, some R Reddits out there. Uh, there's some good ones. So um, I get to take a little bit of a break. This is great because I get, Mrs. Wee Man's always asking me about education. Education, education, education. She's always asking me questions about cannabinoids, about terpenes, about flavonoids, about esters, about flavorins, about all the plant insides and out. What is THCA? I've, I got. She's asked me that twenty times, so I give her articles all the time to help her learn. Mm-hmm. So she's she's wants to learn more about CBD. She wants to learn, learn more about specific stuff inside the plant because she has ailments that she wants to read about to help her out. So I said, you know, we've talked about terpenes on this show so many times and the benefits of terpenes and and the benefits of cannabinoids and the benefits of flavorins and esters and and flavonoids and all the whole entire plant because there's angels in those leaves. But there's specific parts of this plant that does specific things and terpenes is one of them. So Mrs. Wee Man is going to take you all to school. Go ahead, Mrs. Wee Man. Mm-hmm. Talk about terpity terp terpenes. Yeah, I've got a great article here. Um, How specific terpenes work on pain, inflammation, anxiety, and more. Scent is a strong sense, which also evokes powerful abilities to help us heal. Terpenes are the compounds responsible for the way most plants smell. This article will delve into details on how terpenes may work in specific situations. Terpenes serve three primary benefits. They fight pain. They reduce systemic inflammation, and they lower anxiety. Depending on the cited terpene, a plethora of other primary and secondary benefits exist, including providing antifungal and antibacterial properties. So let's talk about terpenes for pain management. More than 50 million American adults suffer from chronic pain. Chronic pain is defined as pain that persists long after healing is expected, or for a period of six months, and is the result of an ongoing medical condition or damage to the body. Yeah, try the back. Holy smokes. (laughs) The influence of chronic pain on patients varies from minor restrictions to complete loss of independence, affecting one's quality of life. The following terpenes have been shown to assist in pain relief. They are generally most effective in conjunction with other terpenes, cannabinoids, flavonoids, other plant essential oils, and substances. So we have linalool. It has demonstrated anti-inflammatory properties and has the potential to treat inflammatory pain. Myrcene uh, is musky, earthy, and reminiscent of cloves. It has analgesic properties. It causes the TRPV1 activation. TRPV1 belongs to a group of receptor channels that are targets for treating pain. My fave, myrcene. Yeah. Alpha pinene is responsible for the distinctive aromas of pine and fir. The pain relieving properties of pinene have been demonstrated in preclinical studies, finding it to have strong anti inflammatory and anti analgesic effects. Limonene. When inhaled, is known to reduce pain intensity, nausea, and vomiting in pregnant women. It also reduced sensitivity and wide str- widespread bone and muscle pain in studies with mice. beta carophylline was the first non-cannabinoid compound found to activate cannabinoid receptors. It works as a powerhouse to reduce inflammation and pain. beta carophylline binds to the CB2 receptors. Its proposed as therapy for treatment or management of acute chronic inflammatory and neuropathic pain. In addition, the activation of CB2 receptors does not produce psychotropic effects. Alpha-humulene is also known as alpha-carophylene. It has been found to reduce inflammatory pain when applied topically. Now we're going to talk about terpenes for sleep. Remember, those were pain. This is sleep. A lack of sleep influences everyday living. Most people do not function well with less than seven hours of sleep per night. Except for Mrs. Weed Man. (laughs) 68% struggle with sleep at least once per week. And 48% of people using over-the-counter sleep aids take them several times per week. 
insufficient sleep interferes with concentration and increases the risk of chronic illnesses such as cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and diabetes. It also boosts the likelihood of obesity and depression. Now let's talk about terpenes that have been shown to assist with sleep. Terpenes in isolation are not as effective as when used in conjunction with other whole plant compounds. In fact, most of the studies use terpenes along with other components and hardly ever use them in isolation. So, myrcene is believed to be responsible for the sedative effects of many common cannabis preparations. It creates that couch lock effect. Linalool has been used for centuries as a sleep aid. It lessens the anxious emotions provoked by pure THC, thus making it potentially helpful in the treatment of both psychosis and anxiety. It's known to elevate the brain levels of adenosine, a central nervous system depressant causing drowsiness. beta carophylline may be beneficial for insomnia because of its relaxing properties. A pharmacology study demonstrated that a multi-channel essential oil containing carophylline was found to be a potential treatment for insomnia. Terapinol terapinoline, 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 terapinoline? Yes. Terapinoline. That's it. Got it? I think so. I think I got it. It's found in lilacs, nutmeg, cumin, and apples. It's one of cannabis's least common terpenes. Scientific investigation has established that it has sedating effects, especially when inhaled. Ter ter terpinoline, terpinoline, terpinoline? Ter terpinoline. <laughs> terpinoline was also found to be a potent suppressor of the central nervous system. Moving on, we have terpenes for focus and memory. Uh, concentration, too. You can't have one without the other. Concentration is the ability to focus. Uh, attention on a single thought, subject, or object while ignoring distractions. Memory consists of short-term and long-term memory. Memory loss can be temporary or permanent, depending on the cause. And the following terpenes have been shown to assist with focus, memory, and concentration. Alpha-pinene has been shown to improve cognitive function and to increase focus and alertness. Limonene. Uh, has been shown to help with uh, poor blood flow to the brain over time is the leading cause of cognitive decline and memory loss. Preclinical studies have shown that limonene can slow this process. Very cool. Linalool. Alzheimer's is a difficult-to-treat condition which currently has no cure. A preclinical study points to linalool, finding it can reduce the brain plaque responsible for causing cognitive decline. Then we're going to talk about anti-inflammatory terpenes. Inflammation is the body's attempt at self-protection. It is part of the body's immune response and removes harmful stimuli to begin the healing process. There are two kinds of inflammation. Acute inflammation starts rapidly and becomes severe quickly. Acute inflammation is supposed to cease at some point. When it doesn't, it becomes chronic inflammation, which can last for several months and even years. Chronic inflammation can eventually lead to several ongoing conditions, such as rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, organ dysfunction, and various autoimmune diseases. The reason acute inflammation leads to chronic inflammation is currently unknown. The following terpenes have been shown to have anti-inflammatory properties in various studies. Limonene, making its way around again, uh, reduced inflammation scores and levels of tumor necrosis factor uh, in rat colitis. In a human clinical study, it decreased a specific inflammatory marker in elderly participants. Myrcene is back. Uh, it inhibits the production of certain inflammatory markers. Linalool is coming around again, and it may play a major role in anti-inflammatory activity when dominant when dominant in essential oils. And beta-carophylline has, uh, has been found to synergize with THC to relieve itching and protect stomach cells from damage. It has demonstrated therapeutic promise as a neuroprotective agent for neuropathic pain and metabolic diseases. Beta-osamine is a pheromone important for the social regulation of honeybee colonies. This terpene has been associated with anticonvulsant, antifungal, and anti-tumor activity in essential oil combinations. 
and alpha humulene has exhibited pronounced anti-inflammatory properties in animal models. Pinene is uh, the essential oils from various plants rich in alpha and beta pinene were found to decrease inflammation in various animal models. Hold on a second. Yeah. It comes from uh, uh, frankincense. And myrrh? No. Pi pinene <laughs> comes from frankincense? Uh, it says essential oils from various plants such as frankincense. And I love the smell of frankincense. It's like... it That's like a good one. It, it makes like the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Oh like my. when I get that smell it like really lights me up we have some we have some <laughs> essential oil in the in the uh, laundry room that we put on the do on you the, sniff it do you sit in the oh, laundry I, room and smell the every once in a while i walk by and throw <laughs> a little do. frankincense in front Why of my nose put a dab on it's pretty nice all right uh anti-convulsant terpene so seizures an anti-convulsant is a st substance used to prevent or reduce the severity of epileptic seizures and other convulsions the following terpenes have been investigated as anticonvulsants in various studies. Linalool, by blocking receptors for glutamate, a chemical in the brain, uh, glutamate is elevated in seizure disorders. So linalool can decrease that. Uh, recent reports support the possibility that small concentrations of linalool found in certain cannabis chemovars may exert anticonvulsant benefits in human patients. And beta osamine, also found in essential oils, is associated with anticonvulsant activity. And we have terpenes for anxiety and stress. I bet a lot of people can relate to this. Uh, stress affects virtually everyone. 44% of people in the United States feel more stressed than they did five years ago. One in five experience extreme stress with symptoms of shaking, heart palpitations, and depression. In addition, stress is the basic cause of 60% of illnesses and disease. Three out of four physician offices uh, are visited for stress-related ailments. Now let's talk about terpenes that have been helpful with anxiety and stress relief in various studies. Well, back to the linalool and alpha-pinene. Uh, they were combined and showed antidepressant-like activity at high doses. Limonene is known to produce a feeling of well-being. It offers strong anti-anxiety properties and boosts serotonin levels, similar to what some antidepressants do. One of limonene's significant properties is reducing anxiety that some might experience when they've taken too much THC. Myrcene is a recognized sedative used to aid in sleep and beta-carophyllene. And since anxiety and stress generally coexist with depression, terpenes that act as antidepressants are also worth noting. Limonene, a human clinical work, supports the use of limonene for depression. Alpha-pinene, studies have shown that beta-pinene acts as a mood stabilizer. Linalool possesses antidepressant and anti-anxiety properties and is also said to make antidepressant medications, otherwise called SSRIs, more effective. Pretty cool. And we have antimicrobial terpenes. An antimicrobial, an antimicrobial is a compound that targets antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral pathogens. The following terpenes have been shown to have antimicrobial activity in various studies. And we have alpha-pinene, beta-pinene, osamine, limonene, carophyllene oxide and terpenes that demonstrate anti-cancer activity. A scientific investigation has examined the anti-cancer cell activity of cannabis terpenes. These are preclinical studies and shouldn't be used in lieu of standardized cancer treatments and protocols. Limonene. I think this limonene is like the, the uh, one and done. It's like the superstar Lemon terpene. Lemon pledge. Yes, it has demonstrated chemotherapeutic properties by inducing cancer cell death and breast cancer as well as others. There are ongoing trials on limonene for breast cancer. Alpha pinene, ongoing exposure to pinene led to decreased melanoma growth in mice and inhibited human liver cell growth by 79.3%. Myrcene blocks carcinogenic effects of a Afla aflatoxin, there you go. a toxic compound produced by mold that can cause liver damage and cancer. Myrcene will block that. Linalool, My favorite. <laughs> linalool significantly weakens cigarette smoke 
induced infiltration of inflammatory cells. Very interesting. Humulin has been found to hinder tumor growth by encouraging the production of reactive oxygen species, which are chemicals that can help combat cancer cells. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And that's, I mean, like, we don't even know anything yet, really, about the amount of different terpenes that can be found it's like in cannabis. like 500 to 1,000. Yeah. No, there's just not... It's, uh, There's, it's going to be amazing yeah. to watch all of that unfold. Uh, and then we have miscellaneous terpene properties. There are a few other interesting properties of terpenes. Okay, Alpha pinene acts as a bronchiodilator and may help support healthy lung function. Beta carophyllene through a CB2 receptor dependent pathway may be an excellent therapeutic agent to prevent neth nephrotoxicity, a poisonous effect on the kidneys from a chemotherapeutic drug cisplatin. Interesting. Right? It could prevent the toxicity of that. It's pretty wow. cool. Humulene has been found to inhibit fruit fly mating. It also is a uh, has protected cells of the central nervous system from hydrogen peroxide induced cell death by 50%. That one, I don't even know what that means. Those fruit flies are pissed, I heard. They're coming after you yeah, for right. telling people about for the this. Humulene. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the takeaway? Well, terpenes are unique substances that add to the therapeutic benefits of plants. They are responsible for their scent, but also benefit their evolution. And lucky for us, they also provide a diversity of medical attributes along the way. It is clear that the synergy of the terpene alliance makes them more effective together than apart. They seem to work best with other, other substances in the plant, such as cannabinoids, flavonoids, and omega-3 fatty acids. Terpenes can, terpenes can exhibit different properties or effect depending on how they're combined. The best way to get the full benefit of plant medicine is to evoke all of your senses, especially smell. Despite ongoing scientific advancements, the aromatic signatures of nature still have us mystified, and research still has a long way to go until we better understand the magic of terpenes. Well, as Toucan Sam always says from Fruit Loops, follow your nose. The nose always knows. The nose the always nose knows. knows. You don't even need to take in terpenes and eat them. You just smell them, and it'll wake you up. It'll do things to you that you never expect. Like I said, I go by our laundry room has essential oils back there, and I go by there, and I give a little whiff of that frankincense. I'm like, woo! And it, I don't know. makes me feel kind of funny inside. <laughs> <laughs> Can, uh, that was good, though, Mrs. Wee, man. You, uh, that, you taught, some, taught some valuable lessons on that one. Can marijuana help treat headaches? Studies report marijuana can reduce headaches and migraine se severity, but uh, exact doses currently remain unknown. Unless you experience headaches, and especially a migraine, you have no idea how disabling they can be. The throbbing pain, the nausea, the zap of the energy, and almost all constant pain makes your life miserable. Science has yet to understand why they happen and the best way to treat them. So marijuana can marijuana help treat headaches? In 2022, data released from a study regarding uh, helping suffered Medical marijuana results in long-term reduction of migraine frequency by, uh, by up to 60% of treated patients is associated with less disability and lower anti-migraine medication. Additionally, 94% of users experience symptoms relief within two hours of observation window. Um, recent research indicates uh, marijuana can become a new option for patients. A 2017 published review found headaches and disorders are common, debilitating, and in many cases inadequately managed by existing treatments. Before cannabis was made illegally uh, illegal in the 1900s, a review notes notable physicians at the time praised using cannabis to treat headache disorders. Doses at the time were typically administered two to three times a day orally while trying to minimize intoxication. A 2019 survey by Washington State University researchers provided some data around this potential treatment. Scientists used self-reported data of uh, the strain print app to collect information on how patients were using cannabis to treat headaches and migraines. And on average, participants reported inhaling marijuana caused headache severity by uh, a drop by 47%. Migraine sufferers said the pain severity decreased by almost half. Dovboy, bad migraines, and he uses cannabis to make those migraines go bye-bye. Uh, marijuana used in um, an overuse headache in which over-the-counter medications cause headaches to worsen instead of improve. 
Oh, researchers also found no significant difference in pain reduction depending on the other type of participants uh, or marijuana they smoked. Varying levels of THC and CBD had no significant effect, suggesting other properties or cannabinoids in the marijuana plant. There are more than 100 cannabinoids in the cannabis cause the pain reduction in the patients. So they're hoping this research helps and they're going to do more. Great. I love it. Uh, this is all you, Mrs. Weed, man. I'm not even going to read the title. <laughs> this is all you. But good news. Yeah. Yeah, positive. Yeah. Uh, cannabis shows promise in easing endometriosis pain, new research suggests. So, again, stick around, guys. Maybe you could learn something. You could share it with someone you love. In a recent study published in the Journal of Clinical Medicine, researchers reviewed available literature on cannabis as a self-management strategy in the treatment of pain arising due to endometriosis. They further investigated the mechanisms by which cannabis interacts with the endocannabinoid system and the interactions of gut microbiota in treating the condition. Their findings reveal that cannabis-derived endocannabinoids have a protective effect on the gut. They decrease gut inflammation and improve its permeability. This, in turn, suppresses bloating, the most common endometriosis symptom. Cannabinoids further inherently suppress pain receptors and serve as a natural painkiller. These results highlight gut microbiota, biota, biota, and the endocannabinoid system as future clinical trial targets in the fight against endometriosis. Endometriosis is a disease experienced by mature women and characterized by uterus lining-like tissue growing outside of the confines of the uterus. It is a common condition estimated to affect 10% of all women with symptoms including severe pelvic pain and outcomes including difficulties conceiving. In addition to its direct outcomes, endometriosis-related chronic pelvic pain has been associated with several simultaneous health issues, including irritable bowel syndrome, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, mental health issues like depression and anxiety, and chronic fatigue syndrome. Researchers have identified progesterone as a common characteristic of endometriosis, uh, patients suggesting hormone imbalances that subsequently trigger inflammation due to the local infiltration of immune cells. Since most hormone resistance arise due to imbalances within the gut microbial system, recent studies have focused on the association between the gut microbiome and the disease. Current treatment for endometriosis involves a combination of surgical intervention and hormone treatment. Antineuropathics are used to reduce pain and allow for normal daily functioning. Unfortunately, these interventions are medically suboptimal, given the reduced access uh, for women in developing and underdeveloped countries to surgery and the much reduced efficacy of antineuropathics in suppressing pain in endometriosis patients. Research has presented that endometriosis that endometriosis patients are four times more likely to overuse painkillers, thereby developing dependency and abuse conditions. Metabolites from the cannabis family received extensive attention during the 1990s, resulting in the discovery of the endocannabinoid system, a complex signaling system responsible for the endocannabinoid synthesis and catabolism. Cannabidol, CBD, and tetrahydrocannabinol uh, THC, the two main active ingredients derived from cannabis consumption, have intrinsic pain suppression abilities and have been used in other medical research. Given its relative cost and ease of access, cannabis consumption has become a popular self-medication against endometriosis pain despite sufficient research and thereby positively or negatively altering endometriosis outcomes. Research has identified that the endocannabinoid system is primarily involved in pain modulation and inflammation suppression. Endocannabinoids have been shown to activate the CB1 and CB2 receptors, thereby suppressing pain processing in the nervous system and providing relief from pain. The endocannabinoid system is further hypothesized to play a central role in endometriosis pathology, with some researchers referring to the disease as an endocannabinoid deficiency. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Strong correlations have been observed 
between circulating endocannabinoid levels in the plasma and the severity of endometriosis, with lower levels of endocannabinoids associated with increased pain. This indicates that the role of the endocannabinoid system in endometriosis may extend beyond inflammation and pain suppression and warrants further research. In the meantime, the role of cannabis in endometriosis, especially concerning pain suppression capabilities, has spurred examinations of cannabis use as a potential natural alternative to current antineuropathic therapies. An ongoing clinical trial is testing the efficacy of CBD isolate oil and vaporized THC in pain modulation for women admitted to hospitals and clinics reporting severe endometrial pain. These promising findings highlight the potential therapeutic benefits of CBD and THC for endometriosis-associated pain, warranting the need for human studies. These findings are primarily positive, with research confirming the beneficial effects of cannabinoids on endometriosis outcomes and comorbidities of the disease. However, further research is required to assess the safety of THC and CBD administrations in endometriosis treatment. Thankfully, at least one clinical trial aimed at achieving this is already in progress. That's very positive news. Very positive news. It's good stuff. Good research. Department of Public Health recommends hazard controls for Massachusetts cannabis workers. Uh, that one person that died of the dust in the air, the keef and stuff while it was stuffing... It's, it can be kind of harmful, just like mm-hmm. they talk about the pollen. You right. know, when they're when they're chucking pollen too, yeah. a lot of them have to wear it's masks. A lot of plants. Yeah, so um, be careful when you're working. Make sure you're wearing some kind of protective mask that you know that, that you don't breathe all that that in. Uh, Missouri sees over 100 million in uh, marijuana sales in October. Good for Missouri. Mississippi patients are paying very high price for pain relief. And uh, it's like $300 an ounce for medical cannabis in Mississippi. That's a lot of money. Come on, Mississippi. Mississippi Marijuana Dispensary is suing over advertising ban because they won't allow them to uh, have um, uh, those. Uh, I can't believe I can't remember those. Billboards on highways. They're suing. I don't know. I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Just not. Uh, Alaska hemp producer Sioux State saying new ban on products is illegal. And speaking of that, the 2023 uh, uh, farm bill, hemp farm bill, was supposed to get voted on, and it still hasn't. So there's like nothing right now. I think it expired too. So which is not good <laughs> for anybody. So <laughs> so new cannabis research centers launches at University of Minnesota School of Public Health. Virginia Tech researchers award grant to increase understanding of industrial hemp. That's awesome. Fifty-three percent of Americans now live in a legal marijuana state. Report from former federal officials. Firm shows. Crazy. Fifty-three percent. That's all you need to win the vote to make it federally legal, too. <laughs> so, Pennsylvania is stuck in a rock and a hard place about going recreational. So it's uh, the Republican is how is controlled by the Senate, the House and the and the governor is controlled by the Democrats. Come over to the table, legalize it. You're already screwing it up anyway, because what you're gonna do next is terrible. Your the House approves uh Senate pass bill to let medical marijuana growers sell directly to patients. There's no two tier system. It's not gonna go they can just sell directly. I, I think it stinks for the distrib for the um dispensaries that that now are gonna have to like try to have more competition. So um in some ways, it's good for the grower because you're going to get the freshest friggin' weed ever to a patient that I can't argue with compared to going from your place to dispensary sitting on a shelf for how long. In some ways, it's good. Some ways, it's bad. I feel bad, though, for the dispensary owners because they got a lot of money in debt. So do the cultivators. So um, it's interesting, though. A uh, report on workers' death finds that marijuana processing workers may be in high risk of developing asthma. You are breathing in particles let's just say uh pollen particles or maybe not even pollen particles but like just stuff coming from the plant that you're not digest you, your lungs don't digest anything like that if you swallow it it might be a little bit different story your body can digest it but you're breathing that in your lungs and there's no way for your lungs to get that out so like, i mean you're, you should be wearing protective gear while working 
You're working with a lot of it. It's not like us that smoke it at home. We roll a joint, we right. smoke it, and then we go to bed. We're not working with a lot of pounds. Yuki's throwing her voice out there too. Uh, we're working with a lot of. You're working with a lot of pounds, and you're you're breathing that in. So just be careful. You know, protect yourself. Oklahoma task seizes 36 tons of illegal cannabis, 72 pounds of black market marijuana inside a metal barn on November 9th in Wagner County. 72,000 pounds of black traditional market, whatever. There's a lot of illegal grows in Oklahoma. That, that fucking state is out of control, and they're trying to cut down on it. But I just think about how much resources were wasted to grow that weed. And, I mean, come on, Oklahoma's not just like – there's not a ton of water in Oklahoma, <laughs> you know, there's more oil, <laughs> I think, in Oklahoma than there is water. Correct me if I'm wrong, Oklahoma. I love your state, so I mean, I've been to Tulsa many, many a times. So, um, but that's a lot of that's a lot of wasted that legal growers that pay taxes could have used that water to grow their weed. Just, just saying. Uh, Michigan cannabis sales soften a little bit, but not by much. $262 million in sales. <laughs> but you're up 25%, 25.5% from a year earlier. So it's just slow. It's October. Everyone's back to school. Your summertime's over. Your lakes are closed up. No one's going to Michigan to their cabins as much, you know. Is there progress or not happening progress fast enough for social equity <laughs> entrepreneurs? So I'm pretty high. You are so high. <laughs> well, progress is not happening fast enough not for happening. marijuana social equity entrepreneurs. All right. All right. Arizona, Illinois, and Michigan were among a handful of states over the past year where black entrepreneurs opened cannabis stores in key markets. In March, Nuggets Dispensary became the first black-owned business with a cannabis social equity retail license to open in Detroit, four years after the state approved recreational cannabis sales. Later that month, high-profile cannabis shop, a majority black-owned adult-use cannabis store, also opened its doors in the Motor City. Despite That took four years, though. And that those were the first people who should have been opening places, mm -hmm. right? Um, despite state and local jurisdictions earmarking more licenses for social equity applicants, success stories within the industry segment remain elusive. But there are exceptions, including Anu Coat of Illinois and Alicia Deals of Arizona. Uh, in September, Coat, it's K H O T. Open Social Dispensary in the Chicago suburb, suburb of Park Ridge. Its designation is the suburb's only operational cannabis retailer, as well as its proximity to O'Hare International Airport and other public transportation hub, hubs, has led to strong sales. It has exceeded our expectations, said Cote, who immigrated to the United States from India in 2008. The entrepreneur qualified as a social equity applicant because more than half of her 25 to 30 employees came from communities disproportionately affected by marijuana arrests and incarceration. Coates' experience in business, real estate, and fundraising helped secure a prime store location and capital, two of the biggest hurdles for social equity operators nationwide. Coat raised $3 million from friends, family, and private investors to open Social's first location and is planning another funding round to ex expand her storefronts. Despite the early success, missteps occurred along the way, including challenges of securing and purchasing property for the store. It was a very steep learning curve, Coat said. We definitely made a lot of mistakes, but we learned from them, and I think we are going to open our second dispensary. We're going to do it so much better. In several ways, she has already defied the odds. In Illinois, only 18% of retail outlets were majority owned by women. In 2022, I'm sorry, only 18% of retail outlets were majority owned by women in 2022, and about 11% were, were majority owned by non-white operators, according to the annual industry report. Wow, weird how this weed is affecting my speech came and went yeah like, like at one point i was level-headed yeah and then all of a sudden now i'm high again but like you're cruising gotta, along reading and then you can't get a like a, a basic little, word got a little zing to it's it it's a little it's out there yeah <laughs> um so um 
So that was from an industry report from the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation. Of the 185 social equity retail licenses in Illinois issued in July 2022, roughly 40 are open for business, and another dozen or so are in the pipeline, according to research from Ananda Ananda Strategy, a Los Angeles-based consultancy. While the pace of store openings has been slow, it is important to note that over the past three to four months, the pace at which the social equity stores in Illinois have opened has increased considerably, said Hirsch Jane, Ananda's strategy founder. In June, deals became the, fir- deals became the first black social equity lottery winner to own and open a cannabis store in Arizona. Uh, It was more than survival of the fittest, said the entrepreneur, who partnered with California cannabis brand Cookies to open her store in Tempe. I was fortunate enough to partner with some big guys that didn't want to take advantage of me. According to internal research cross-referenced with industry sources and databases, MJ Biz Daily in February reported that fewer than 20 of the nation's 10,000 or so medical marijuana dispensaries and adult use stores were black-owned. 20 of 10,000 were black owned, a major underrepresentation in an industry with social equity touted as a tenant. That number has increased modestly since then, according to industry insiders, as well as reporting to MJ Biz Daily and other news outlets. Deals, who left nursing school to pursue an opportunity in the cannabis industry, is busy working on another passion project. She wants to establish a law firm that specializes in expunging marijuana-related criminal records and helping free those with cannabis offenses from incarceration. The issue hit home for the Phoenix native. Her father is in prison serving a 12 serving his 12th year of an 18-year sentence for marijuana-related charges. I plan to be a force for change, Deal said. I'm here to bridge the gap between those who have duly suffered and those who have benefited from cannabis. Uh, Madison, Madison Shockley's tortuous route to opening a cannabis store in Los Angeles took five years, months of litigation, and more than $1 million in investments. His store, Off the Charts, held a grand opening in early August at its 3,400-square-foot space in South L.A. When Shockley secured the property, he thought it would take three months to get through building and safety approvals. Well, it took almost three years. Uh, His lawsuit is challenging the Los Angeles lottery and licensing process, and it resulted in the issuance of 100 more retail licenses, including his own. His arduous journey has inspired dozens of other social equity applicants in L.A. and elsewhere. It's been crazy because I've been getting a lot of calls from my fellow social equity entrepreneurs, he said. A lot of them have let me know this is a moment for all of us. While L.A.'s Department of Cannabis Regulation has issued more than 400 social equity business licenses, including more than 80 for retail, among the highest totals in the country, getting those licensees up and running has been extremely difficult. Only a handful of social equity retailers, such as Off the Charts, are operational in Los Angeles today, as capital shortages and securing approved real estate remain perennial challenges. Maryland and Missouri both launched recreational sales this year with zero social equity license holders, instead giving existing medical marijuana operators the first crack at participating in the new adult use markets. Each state, however, has earmarked a certain number of licenses for social equity applicants in upcoming licensing rounds. Uh, Maryland regulators in September released guidelines for social equity applicant eligibility and information for an online verification portal to assist prospective applicants. The first round of licensing for standard and micro cannabis growers, processors, and retailers will be exclusive to social equity applicants. Under Maryland law, the first batch of new adult use licenses must be awarded before January 1st of 2024. In late July, Missouri opened its application window for the state's first lottery for micro-business licenses. Applicants do not have to be Missouri residents, although majority owners must meet at least one eligibility criteria, such as having a disability connected to military service, having been convicted of a nonviolent marijuana offense, or residing in a qualifying zip code. 
the validity of numerous qualifying zip codes provided by Missouri State Highway Patrol, including those encompassing government buildings, post office boxes, and affluent suburbs, have been criticized and questioned by social equity advocates, including the local and state chapters of the NAACP. The micro-business licenses were designed to allow marginalized or underrepresented individuals to participate in the legal marijuana market, according to an April newsletter uh, issued by the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, the state's cannabis regulator. The DHSS, the Department of Health and Senior Services, awarded the first 48 of 144 to total micro-business licenses in early October, and three lottery rounds will be spread over the upcoming 18 months. Unlike Missouri and Maryland, New York went all in on social equity, and the results have fallen far short of expectations nearly one year after the state launched recreational sales in December of 2022, industry insiders contend. Conditional Adult Use Retail Dispensary, or CORD, C-A-U-R-D, License holders and applicants, uh, New York's version of social equity, have taken on multiple challenges from the start, despite lofty promises from the state's top politicians. New York planned to establish a $200 million social equity fund administered through the Dormitory Authority of New York to help fund startup costs, find rental properties for entrepreneurs, and establish turnkey dispensaries. The fund finally secured an investor in late June, while the latter two goals haven't fully materialized. Lawsuits challenging local residency requirements for licensing and the state's overall licensing process have delayed licensing issuance, processing, and approvals for months. And a policy shift in September by the state's Office of Cannabis Management effectively wiped out the first mover advantage that CORD licensees and applicants hope to enjoy. The Office of Cannabis Management voted to allow the state's medical marijuana operators to apply for adult-use retail licenses, effectively opening the gates for vertically integrated multi-state operators to enter the largest potential market on the East Coast, likely by year-end. The program seemed like a dream come true, as the state promised to provide us with a turnkey dispensary and even allocate a suitable location if we qualified, said Tantalo, who established who helped establish the New York CORD, Coalition for Licensees and Applicants. However, it quickly became apparent that there was nothing, this was nothing more than a massive bait-and-switch scheme. Schemers. Yeah. As of press time, fewer than 30 regulated cannabis retailers are open in the state. But as many as 2,000 unlicensed sellers are operating in New York City alone. It's a hot mess. Those bodegas making yeah. monies. In May, Washington Governor Jay Inslee signed a law requiring the state to issue up to 52 marijuana retail licenses under its newly developed social equity program, but the timeline is a long one. The licenses will be issued between 2024 and 2032. The Washington State Liquor and Cannabis Board could increase that number, but that would require legislative approval. They plan to issue about 46 retail licenses this year to social equity applicants harmed by the government's war on drugs. Their taxes in Washington are fucking ridiculous. That state should be ashamed. <laughs> but they charge for taxes out there like over 40% on everything straight across the board. Absolutely ridiculous. This is just so bad. Poor Washington. Beautiful state, though. Great people. Uh, some cannabis legalization international news from around the globe. Japan's medical cannabis bill, the Asian country, has been staunchly opposed to cannabis consumption for decades with harsh penalties and even minor possessions. Uh, so on uh, last Tuesday, the House of Representatives passed a medical cannabis bill. But tourists shouldn't start celebrating as lawmakers made clear that regulation consumption was still highly illegal. Oof. European legalization pilot programs. Uh, European countries are already testing the waters of medical cannabis. Script, a government cannabis legalization harm reduction program, is underway in multiple cities and starting January 2023. Almost 400 participants, uh, participants were granted <laughs> the ability to buy cannabis legally at the pharmacy in Bazel. 
the Netherlands was set to launch a legalization pilot program the fourth quarter, according to February 2023 announcement. At the end of the fourth quarter, approaches as possible launch date is quickly approaching. Well, so we'll see. Uh, Ireland's first medical cannabis clinic opened after four years. Good for them. South Africa is one step closer to legalization. Let's go. Um, this is from uh, an XFP boss in Australia was saying about uh, former Australian federal police boss Mick Palmer has said that prohibition of cannabis use is not just failing, it's causing real harm, as he describes in his journey from a hard-nosed policeman to a vocal advocate for cannabis law reform. In a speech at Parliament House in Victoria uh, last Wednesday afternoon, Palmer said that uh, he was a detective in the Northern Territory in the 60s. He used to arrest people for possessing and using cannabis at parties. Looking back, he said his attitude then, along with most of his colleagues, was you do the crime, you do the time. We don't make the laws, we just enforce them. The statistics made it clear that criminal sanctions disappropriately impacted indigenous and minority communities, the homeless and disadvantaged, and persons suffering depression and other mental health problems, Palmer said in his inaugural David Pennington orientation. His uh, widespread use of cannabis indicated fear of arrest was not working. Uh, in 2019, 37% of Australians said they had used cannabis at least once. Um, so he's an advocate for it in this article. He's saying, so we'll see what happens. Maybe he'll push and help get a push through. But he's exactly right because you what you did over there. Same thing that happened over here. So uh, petition calls for Canadian regulators to allow more potent edibles. Yes, you. that law is so messed up. You're only allowed to buy 10 milligrams per packet. That's it. One 10 milligram could be two fives but that's it. or one 10. And that's it per package. And they're trying to fight for 100 milligrams of THC per package. Poor Ann, our friend Ann, right? Ann Fusion, for, uh, mm -hmm. Toronto. Mm -hmm. Poor Ann. She makes edibles and loves edibles. And the market there is so screwed up. Ugh, come on, Canada. I don't understand. We were all trolled this week. Every single one of us were trolled. We were trolled so bad. <laughs> Everybody out there. Holy shit. The memes after this all happened. Respect my privacy. Just crazy, crazy Snoop. Once again, trolled everybody. It was, I mean, the internet was going crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And the memes were all over the place. And podcasts and people were talking about it. And radio and live news. It was awesome. So if you don't know who Snoop Dogg is, <laughs> you know who Snoop Dogg is. I mean, maybe you don't care about him or what he's doing or anything that he creates, but the man is a legend. He, between music and entertainment industry and his marketing and his offshoots of that and his work with Martha Stewart, he, he just has the golden touch. He, he is amazing. And he's a freaking, we think he's a great musician. We, we love him. So anyway, this week he just pulled the wool on everybody. I Okay, so he pops out, right, asking for privacy. Hip-hop legend and longtime weed enthusiast Snoop Dogg said he stopped smoking. He didn't say that. He said, I stopped smoke. Yeah. Like, what the? What does that even mean? <laughs> right? So that's what everybody said. What, what does it mean? So then memes were out. So it was a picture of him with prayer hands. And he said, you know, please respect my privacy. After long conversations with my family and much consideration, I have decided to stop smoke and, you know, whatever. And so, of course, it was just like if you if you're not on social media, <laughs> this was a pretty funny event because people were making fake uh, memes to kind of knock off on it and creating their own and off spin off. One of my favorite yeah. memes was they showed Snoop Dogg's face and they're like what Snoop Dogg's uh the, joint, a day joint without roller. weed? No, joint roller oh. looked like when he knows he's not going to oh, be rolling yeah. joints anymore for Snoop. <laughs> that one was funny. And then there was a picture of him like one day without weed and he looked like he was 80 yeah. and like haggard and dying. <laughs> so sure enough, it, it, most people that if you know him and you know he's always got his next play moving along, most people were on to the fact that he's got to have some sort of piece that he's he's getting ready to drop right it's going to be some music or da 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 well it ends up that he is involved he has a couple different cannabis brands but he drops a photo his post the other day he comes back and he's it's him sitting next to a smokeless bonfire pit <laughs> and that's it 
That's it. That's what it all came down to. It was marketing. It was all marketing for this brand, for this smoke pit. They must have, all smoke I was pit. thinking, though, is like, how many millions of dollars did they have to get to pay him to do that? I mean, that was that was pretty that was the clever. Fucking, not, was just, clever. not just not uh, just not just social media, the world. Yeah. Talk show hosts, the, the wor- news, the everything, world. the world, the world, not just the United States of America. Right. I saw news captions on everything that Snoop was not smoking weed and everything yeah. people were capturing. I mean, and the and the comments and every post, uh, it'd be just, like Cheecher Chong, Cheech talk, Chong saying they it. even mentioned something on their thing going uh, good yeah. more for us. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying this was like not just the United States. This was global. This reached from one Everyone. pole to the other pole and around the world a couple two three times. <laughs> I mean, it was, f- I, I mean, if <laughs> it's, it really got it's the conversation fucking, started. it's just genius. The man it's has just power. Literally because of his, his whole persona is weed. I mean, that's what a lot of people know him for besides his music is his music was about weed. So it's all he talked about. He smoked memes from around. I mean, the internet blew him up even more, but to do this, I mean, this was a global fucking talk. It's insane. Yeah. And Poppy. it was all for a bonfire pit. I wonder if it, like, yeah, I don't know. They had to spend a shit ton of money to get him to do that. Or he was just like, yeah, I'll do it. No big deal. I don't know. I don't. I, people won't believe it, right? Some did. Who would have ever I mean, even, that? Even, there was even, like, some, some hip-hop artists were like, I don't smoke no more, and I support him. I got his back, you know? Yeah, because people were, like, ripping on him. Yeah. So then everyone's like, leave Snoop alone. Yeah, so it's just like. It was a great. I looked Give at the you. The man is private. I looked at you and I was kind of like, okay, cool, whatever. And I just kept on. I looked my at day. you. And I was like, he's got something. And to you sell said, us. you're like, you're like, he, I bet you he's about to launch an ed- another edible brand or something. He's got something going on with Martin. So I'm like, probably. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, Who cares? Like, I don't care. You know, I just like the memes. The memes made me laugh. But like I said, it was a global. I mean, it was all over the fucking place. It's crazy. So, uh, but good for you, Snoop. I mean, it just you trolled everybody. <laughs> fucking good <laughs> and whether he's not smoking or he is smoking i don't give a fuck though it's your life choose how you want to live <laughs> right That's i'm right. gonna continue to smoke yep. <laughs> so um one last thing we forgot to mention last week we went to a really dope ass fun party yeah we did. i'm gonna call it a party it was supposed to be a networking event that wasn't no motherfucking networking event. <laughs> that was a fucking party <laughs> That was a lot of fun. We that went was a to lot of fun. Uh, our friends over at Profess Session, High Focus Media, uh, Maddie, Shana, and Nicole. Phenomenal job um, putting together a dope ass Profess Sesh. It was a fucking party. It was great. We got to smoke inside. I got to talk to a lot of people. You couldn't breathe because it was so much. Cl- it was one big cloud. Uh, all the people that were there w- with their with their tables, the sponsors that sponsored it, the 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 bar was dope. Never have I ever. So much fun. The front of the bar was great. The back of the bar was great. Upstairs was cool. The people hanging out with was. We got to see a lot of cool people that we know, and then we didn't know. We just met for the first time. You got elbowed in the head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. It was kind of funny. Uh, I was so high. I didn't even know. What- happened it was just a fun night a lot of dope ass people a lot of people getting stoned and just a cool night i, I gotta say well done professor it was great. well done well fucking done can't wait for the next one yeah um, what, so. what really made it such a great event in part was it's very challenging in in anyone's market really to have consumption to have open consumption so you have these cannabis events but you have to go elsewhere you have to go you know stand in a bus or stand in a garage or go walk down the street to smoke this event you could actually consume right in this space and that it only happens in a public event like it doesn't happen frequently unless someone's renting like a private space where it can be done right and so it was just really cool because we were just in like a essentially a bar nightclub kind of environment it was really more like a bar up front nightclub in the back and loud like dj playing and it was just a really fun time and like mr weedman said there was just there were joints flying all over the place i came with some there fucking so honkers much, there was and so much weed went home with one yeah and uh and but i mean 
It was a great time. Yeah, there was people passing out weed. There was fucking dabs going. Not passing out from weed. No, passing no, 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 out no weed. just passing out <laughs> weed. Uh, there was fucking some hash being thrown around. I really wanted to smoke it, but I knew if I smoked it, we weren't going anywhere for a while because that hash was pretty legit. The, the f- six or seven flavors they were they were throwing out. Uh, we got to do some bags. It was fun. Some fucking vape bags. Yep. Big old volcanoes were going around too. That was fun. So good job. Kudos to you three, and kudos to Professor S and everybody that showed up and just just showed the fucking town like how cool a bunch of fucking weed smokers are you know it was dope great um miss weed man mr weed man that's the end of the show yeah boo got anything else to say well i'm gonna get normal again and smoke <laughs> some more weed and we have uh, a f- super fun American holiday coming up in a couple days, Thanksgiving. And so I wish all of you who partake in Thanksgiving tradition a wonderful day with whoever you spend it with. Just I hope that you're feasting and enjoying a great meal and some really great company. Enjoy. Thanks giving anybody everybody with a D. Thanksgiving. And don't forget to do the cousins walk after dinner. Cousins walk around the block. It's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bless you all out there. We love you. We need some peace. We need some love. We need some kindness. Please, please, world, get together and come in love and healing. And man, oh my, my goodness. I love you all out there. As Polly always says, smoke smart. Puff, puff, and away. Puff, puff, pass. Check out our cannabis lifestyle brand online at 8decades.com. Our custom smokes and accessories are perfect for your coffee table, bedroom nightstand, or kitchen counter. They're designed for you to show them off. The Canna community is also loving our hemp and cotton blend t-shirts, sweatshirts, scarves, and hats, finished off with our 8 Decades logo. We've got some awesome long-lasting goods that will be your favorite for years to come. 8 Decades, because a ninth decade of cannabis prohibition isn't acceptable.